Hello, beautiful people. Let's Alisa Matthews here with Channeling Eric and with uh, Atlanta Scaler. And we have Helena Nemec at, and what is your web? Oh, you don't have a website yet, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just my email. Which yeah. Is? Helena Nemec 01 at gmail.com. All right. But stay tuned because you'll see she'll eventually have her website up and yeah. running. And she's been doing such amazing work on the very rare person that does not get su complete success from the scalar work that we do. Uh, she will scan your body for energy blocks. And if they're in there, she will clear them for you and give you some uh, additional advice. And then very often the, the scalar instructions are just standing there. Yeah. Right? You penetrate yeah. and flow in and she can even see. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yes. But we're not here to talk about that. We are talked to, here to ask Eric some questions and also another little uh, baby soul, Benja. Mm -hmm. I will give you a little backstory. Hi, Eric. I love you. And Merry Christmas. Hi, Mama. I love you, too. And uh, hi. Well, let me just read this and then maybe, uh, Eric, you can bring Benja mm -hmm. in. So this uh, person uh, was on the Hour of Enlightenment radio, uh, Enlightenment radio show a couple of years ago. And during mm -hmm. that show, Eric uh, told us that we, me and my son, Benja, who died at two months old, were going to be on the show again. Me and Benja have a plan. It is an idea to do an interview with Benja. I will tell you why this would be interesting for your audience and make it easier to make it easier. She added a list of questions. The reason why I think this could be interesting is because people, especially parents who have lost a baby or a very young child, can learn that the consciousness of babies who have passed uh, over is the same as adults, that the soul is uh, of the same level and that you can communicate with them the same way that you can uh, with adults. So my son died when he was two months old. When he died, I felt nothing but love. It was a euphoric feeling, nothing what I was expecting. I was scared to, uh, to death about losing him. But when he died in my arms, oh, I felt a serenity, a calmness, a feeling of perfection. Everything was exactly how it's supposed to be. How strange this may seem. Later on, he let me feel uh, what he was feeling when he made the transition into the non-physical the weeks and months after that, I felt like there was something wrong with me. Like I didn't love my son enough. Like I haven't uh, haven't been a good mother by not missing him. That my heart was not working, and that I didn't know how to grieve. How to grieve, and most of all, I needed a really good shrink. Now I know nothing of of that is true. Now I know nothing of that is true, and he made me understand what death is. He started to, uh, connecting to me really soon afterwards, but he did it not in a baby way, but in a very wise, intelligent, sometimes uh, cryptical way. I think it could be interesting for your audience to realize that even, even uh, babies, when they uh, die at a really young age, even when they haven't been born yet, are complete souls. They have the wisdom like the, like any other soul, that like you and me. Thank you for that you can communicate with him if you want to be, if you want to in a grown up way. Well, I'm reading terrible, sorry. So here's some questions oh. for Benja and Eric. Eric, first of all, do you have anything to say about the death of very young souls of babies? And also maybe you can bring Benja in if he's not already. Yes, um, Eric, just he, he wants me just to share an experience and why this topic was so important to me. Yeah. Um, I When I was back in Ireland, I went to see a medium and uh, I had lost a baby at 17. Oh. So that's 40 years ago. And no medium had ever brought this baby through, but she did. And uh, the this baby soul wanted me to name her. Uh, and and talked to her and I did told me that she was with me and my siblings or her siblings sorry um the entire time um and that she thanked me for uh for being her mother even just for that short time and I, like it was so traumatic at the time um but I hadn't thought about it in so long and no other medium had had ever brought her forth until now so <clears throat> I've been um, communicating with her. She's here with Eric now. And Benja, there, there's like, um, Eric has him with him. Um, Eric, and, and, 
Can, I'm sorry. Yeah. Here's what I just thought. Can you bring your brother Seth in? He was stillborn. He he's with Eric right now. Oh. He he is. He's with Eric now. I see. Um, Eric had been talking with me earlier about him. Um, and uh, yeah, like just going over, you know, my questions and things too, right? Um, Eric's actually he's showing me so, himself right now, just um, babies all around, mm -hmm. and and he wanted me to 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 say that. When I watched that video of your grandson Grayson carrying around his sister, his oh, baby yeah. sister, Easton, yeah, yeah, Easton. Sorry, um, Eric had said it to me as I was watching it. He goes, you know, a lot of times it's the other way around. The babies carry us; we're not carrying them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and like as far as my baby goes, uh, Aaron, um, she hasn't ever lived. Uh, a life on this plane as a human um, just wanted that feeling of you know the mothering and and to like for my lessons as well you know um, because like that mother um, what I got was she was very spiritually aligned um, mm -hmm. she, she got it even though like her her mental mind was questioning why am I not grieving why am I you know do I need to you know am I losing my mind or whatever um that that wasn't the case at all she was so aligned with her and her son um and understood the process fully and um yeah he's here so i'll go ahead and answer her questions or any questions <laughs> all right well we'll start with hers and then i'll, I'll ask mm -hmm. um seth uh, some questions uh, okay benja did you realize you were going to die Yes. Yes. Can you tell me what your transition was like? Um, he's saying that that even though they're so young um, to us, when they transition, they still go through that transition period. Um, like they'll be greeted by, you know, uh, other spirits and uh, and sometimes they might even need healing. You know, um, like that they'll be in like a, to me, it, it comes across like a tunnel of just love surrounding them. Yeah. Um, but their transition is um, like anyone else's just, you know, even though they're young and, and, and open to like, um, they're more spiritually open and aware yeah. than, than us as older you know, adults and, and, you know, teenagers and whatever, you know, they're, they're more open, but they still go through the same, you know, transition. Um, he's telling me that they even, they even did a life review with him. I was going to ask. Those, yeah. yeah. For those two months. Yes. Do most baby souls go through life review. Yes, because they're coming here for their experience and they're, they're um whatever like um whatever they're they're gaining out of that so yes they they will i mean it, obviously it won't be long life reviews but you know um they're still coming back into full like spirit form and coming into you know uh spirit so yes okay aaron why did you why have you not incarnated on this plane do you incarnate on other planets instead or do you not incarnate at all? She's saying that she has incarnated in other planets. Um, what I was getting was that she was like an angel. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, it did, uh, it did teach me a lot because I was devastated, mm -hmm. um, heartbroken and I felt, and I'm, I'm sure many uh, people, mothers feel this way too, is guilt. Yeah. You know, um, what did I do? Um, mm -hmm. It feels like a punishment, yeah. you know, um, but in that pain and grief, um, that can lead to the healing and then, you know, self-love. And uh, it's like, she's been with me all this time, but to me, it's just been like, we've just been reunited, you know, so... Yeah. 
Man. But yeah, she's saying that she has incarnated in other dimensions. Ooh. So cool. Your little angel. Yeah. Because yeah. you were so young when you died, uh, Benja, was mm -hmm. there still a stronger connection with the afterlife when you went, or maybe even during your time you were here? Yes. Yes. He's saying that that all souls that that come in um are so much more aware like to to us they look like little helpless babies but they're much more open to the veil um they haven't had the experiences that close us up you know so um yeah he's he's saying that they're very connected very aware what about you seth why did you why were you still born He's saying he just wanted to experience the mothering and the nurturing that you gave him when you when you were pregnant. Okay. Um, that was his uh, his like soul contract. That's that's what he wanted to feel um, in, in this in like in this lifetime, and and also to you know um, the lessons that for you for the family you know for ruin. Okay. Um, well, the reason he died was because um, Eric's uh, older sisters were chasing him around. And I was lying down because I just got home from having an amniocentesis. And he jumped, mm -hmm. like mommy's base, right? Jumped mm -hmm. on my stomach. And then I started leaking amniotic fluid. And uh, over the months, it, it, it just, you know, got the, it, it just got infected and he died. So why? No. Is that a contract thing? Yes, it's, it was a soul contract. Yes. Are you, have you reincarnated or will you? He says he has. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Where, yes. Where is he? Is he in our family or someone else's? Yeah, within your family. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, is he a, a boy or a girl? I'm getting your granddaughter. Okay. Well, um, got, uh, well, there's Morgan, the newest one, and then there's Harper and Juliet, and Arlene. Arlene is the one that I oh, got. Wow. Arlene. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. What about you, Benja? Have you reincarnated? Yes. Okay. Within yeah, the but not not to the same not to the same okay. family. Right, right. Um, your communication with your mother was immediately of a high intelligence. Is that possible for all children who die, or had this something to do with your soul contract, Benja? Um, it had to do with the soul contract, but it's also um the the mother as well. You know, um, In what like way? I say, she she was well, she was aligned. very much aligned and open to that you know the connection was there and uh she um she was at that vibration yeah. where she could understand that oh, have understanding of it that makes sense so it was both both combined actually right so yeah. that's what he's saying it was both of them wow that's interesting so i mean that's probably not very common is that why, what's the main reason she did not feel any grief? Just like she knew he would be, he's okay or? Yeah, like he was able to, um, how do I put this? Mm -hmm. To transmit his energy to her, letting her know that, that he was like, this was, you know, purposeful. It, it had nothing to do with her. And um like it, like not those feelings of of guilt and and punishment and things. Mm -hmm. So he he was actually his soul was actually able to transmit that energy to his mother, and she was open to receive it. How often does that happen? Not often, Eric. Saying no, wow, not often. Okay, no. Eric, do you play? Have you played with Seth? I mean, you know your brother. Oh was yeah, yes, yes. Um, uh. He's, he's giving me a visual right now of playing with a little blonde-haired boy. Yes, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, yeah. 
Oh. I was told that if he had not died then, he would have died when he was around two, which is a terrible age to lose. He would be climbing on a ladder and fall and, and something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, was he there to, to greet you, Eric? Not straight away. Oh, yeah. Okay. Not straight away, but he was there. Mm -hmm. um, what can you explain to us about the perspective that babies and young children have uh, and the bigger perspective they receive when they die? So the perspective they have and the bigger uh, perspective they receive when they die. I don't exactly understand that. Well, the, no, um, I like the first thing I got was wonderment um, and joy. Mm -hmm. And then when they die, it's like um, they were already open to the big picture. Yeah. Um, but then they fully embrace the big picture. <laughs> nice. Do they understand, just like grownups, why they lived this life and why they died? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, they're they're souls. A soul is a soul. Is yes, a soul. yes. So I mean, we see them as... physical body, how old it is. Yeah. And a lot of them are older souls, too. You yeah. know, like old souls. So, yeah. like, we look at them as young, vulnerable babies, but that's, like, that's not always the case soul-wise. They could be very, like Eric's saying, very highly evolved souls, yeah. you know? So. Exactly. Do all children need to grow up in heaven or is that an individual choice? It, it's free will. They can, they can be and do whatever they want to experience. Like Aaron comes to me as um, like a five, six year old girl, um, long hair, like her sister, um, pigtails. Um, but yet like, like she, died in my womb right but yeah. that's how she presents herself to me so interesting so yeah, yeah. I, I, it's just like uh, uh adults who die even if, if they're yeah. 90 they seem to present themselves when we're channeling them as their favorite age like in their 40s maybe yeah yeah younger, right yeah yeah and i think they they choose what um what we're open to as well um, like honestly, when I, like I've held her in my arms as a baby and that, and I just cry, you know, so her coming to me as like a five, six year old is easier for me, yeah. you know, so that comes into it too, how we receive them. I see. Oh yeah. That makes sense. What is growing up? Uh, what does growing up look like? What do children learn other than, uh, growing, growing up when died? I don't uh, she's from another country, so I don't know. Yeah. Others, uh, others that grown up when dot when they when he died. I don't understand that one. What they uh, well, well, they they definitely grow from the experience. Okay, that's, yeah, that's why they came here, right? So they do oh, grow yeah. from the experience. But like I said, it's it's not like um they all start out as new souls and be you know it, it's not that way. They can be an older soul evolved and just wanted to experience this and and some of them eric's saying it's um sacrificing isn't the right word but it's the only one i can think of right now but they'll come into this world to teach um so they're not really sacrificing their life you know on earth because that's not what they choose but it, it's uh it can be solely to to teach us and help us you know, learn our lessons. And, mm -hmm. a, a loss, probably, maybe humility. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. um, uh, grief brings many lessons, as as you know, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think too that uh, forgiveness is one of the the biggest lessons too that comes with that. Yeah, self forgiveness. Yeah. It seems like when babies die, I, I bet you most of them are older souls because they come in as teachers more than they do as students. Is that right? Right. Right. So some of them are newer souls, you know, um, that want to learn what, what is their lesson then as, as a student rather than a teacher? 
Well, like say say my grandson, um, he's in your soul. He hasn't lived a lot of lifetimes on earth. Yeah. And he's come come into this lifetime with autism. Mm -hmm. And um he chose that, that like he yeah. chose that to come in and uh uh live this life. It kind of he's he's detached, you know, from from a lot of things that affect us. Mm -hmm. Uh so that's what he chose to to come in and um so and he he's only had like a handful of lifetimes on yeah. earth, you know. So okay. maybe they're uh, those who are autistic want to experience just are observers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I know my grandson's from another planet, like he's you know, from another dimension and uh um but he healed like he he was the healer in our family he definitely has done so much healing and continues to do so you know um what if a child dies of course there's almost always an immense mm -hmm. amount of grief uh with the people that they leave behind how do these children right. deal with that in general and then we'll ask uh aaron and and uh Bencha and Seth, how they dealt with it in general, Eric. How do they deal with it? Eric's saying in in general, they just be with their families. They're present there, um, especially for the first bit mm -hmm. to uh, to comfort and to enemy. Uh oh, I lost your sound. Oh, that was my phone rang. Sorry, oh, I just yeah, yeah. Got it. Sorry, got it. <laughs> sorry about that. Um. No, uh, I lost my train of thought there now. Um, how did they deal with the parents, the, the people? The oh, right, parents? right. So, um, Eric's saying it's just like with him, mom, you know, um, he was around each and all of you, you know, through your grief and uh, comforting, and uh, you know, they put their energy into us, whether we're conscious of it or not you know, for, for comfort and uh, support. Okay. Erin, how did you deal with your mom's grief? Anything different than what's already been said? Erin said that she was with me. Um, she knows that I was unconscious of that. I, I had no, um, no feelings of that at the time. Um, but she's saying, look at now, like, you know, 40 years on and the the guidance and the lessons. And, and I have always felt so protected in this life. Like, honestly, I'm worse than a cat. You know, there's so many times that that I should I should have died not being here, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always felt very protected. And she's she's definitely a part of that. You know, yeah, she's, an, so, she's angelic. It's that yeah, angelic yeah. protection that she gives you. That's definitely, beautiful. yeah. Beautiful. And yet, I've been unaware of it for you know up until now, forty years yeah. later. So everything comes around, comes full circle. Mommy's saying that um, it will unfold, and you know, okay. more layers and layers. <laughs> All right. What about um, yeah? What about you, Benja? How did you deal with? the the, the uh, grief of your mom oh she didn't have grief never mind we'll go on to Seth how did you deal with my grief and Papa's grief et cetera et cetera he said I never left your mama okay um he's been with you and the family um so he's and, and Arlene he, he is Arlene but his soul yeah, yeah, of, yeah. of his soul is was there to meet Eric and to also yeah and he, he like he was you know excited to meet Eric he was excited for you know and and they have lived other lifetimes together too mm -hmm. so it, it was like a reunion you know I also have heard that a part of him is is in Lucas observing through Lucas's lives um li uh, life uh, and learning from that so yeah, so yeah. That, that's true that a lot of these babies or people in general can actually reincarnate, but parts of them, but they're, yeah, be yeah, be like other like, people or yeah, attached to it. Yeah, yeah, that is cool. Like they they can have 
many incarnations at one time. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, the higher self or the higher soul is uh, still there, you know. Yeah, um, exactly. We just are fractals, you yeah. know. Um, That's how Erica describes um, this whole interesting linear time as a human construct thing, that it's like a big wagon wheel, and the hub is the higher soul in heaven. And that mm. the spokes are different lifetimes. They were currently living. And right, then the wheel right. turns in the mud, leaving a track, and that's linear time. I think that's so cool. No, that, that really was a good analogy. Good job, Eric. <laughs> yeah, and also he describes it as a stack of books. Those, those are all the lives. You just happen to be mm. taking one book and reading it out of that stack, and that's your current life. But there are all those right. still there. Right. That's cool. Dumb it down for us, Eric. <laughs> yeah right. is it true that uh, that children when they die uh, of a young age are not living their life only for themselves but a big part of it is the energetic connections with their parent and other family members to support them or in a way to guide them i'm not sure who 100 percent. all right okay yeah for merit 100 percent. okay that is true so all right that's interesting what are the reasons life lessons for a very young baby or child to die so young? Yeah, we've gone over some of that. Yeah. Love forgiveness. Yeah. I felt so yeah. much guilt yeah. because, you know, I, oh. I shouldn't have let Eric jump on my stomach. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't brace myself or anything. And um, and then humility for those who feel invulnerable. Nothing bad is going to ever happen mm -hmm. to me, that sort of thing. And then Compassion. Just learning, how, learning how about loss. Anything? Yeah, compassion, empathy. Yeah, you know, um, pain can can teach a lot. You know. Yeah, that's true. Uh, anything the child? What What are some of the other things the child learns? What the three D um, physicality is like, or being in the the physical. Um, in the womb, that feeling in the womb, um, that uh, Eric's given, or sorry, Aaron's given me that, um, the birthing process, um, like being born into the physical plane and, uh, love, um, from parents. Mm -hmm. Um, although like Eric's saying too, there, there are some babies that, um, weren't wanted they they maybe weren't planned and weren't oh, yeah. uh like they wouldn't it maybe wouldn't have been like a loving upbringing <laughs> you know um and, and it's it's their free will like they you know they soul contract they choose you know um but but every one of them has great meaning and impact okay. in, in the lives of those you know I bet most of them are here to teach, but um, yeah. maybe. Um, what about people, uh, kids who are aborted purposely? Is there anything different with them? No matter how what the gestational age is. No, because Eric's just saying that that was soul contracted to, okay. um, as well. Um, Eric, what can you say? To mothers who have had abortions and still to this day even decades later feel intense grief if they do what what can you say to them well he he's saying that a lot of them feel guilt um carry guilt with them for you know yeah. many years after um sometimes when they have other children it alleviates some of that guilt um but some of them, like like I have someone very close to me that had an abortion and uh, then had a baby and then had two miscarriages yeah. and asked me if the miscarriages were a punishment well, yeah. for the abortion, yeah. you know? So it's never a punishment. There is no right or wrong, good or bad, Eric's saying. Right. Um, you make the best decisions at the, with what you know at the time. I wonder, oh, there's no judgment. Yeah. 
I wonder if one thing triggers the guilt, you, you know, at the time that the person had the abortion, they were not mm -hmm. financially capable. They were not mature. Exactly. But then when they mature and, and they had mm -hmm. other children and they said, God, I, they, they look at themselves as a mother of very capable of having a child. But you well, know, Eric, Eric's just times, saying that circumstances, etc. Exactly. So Eric's saying that um, most guilt is in hindsight. Yeah. You know, um, at, at, like you can feel that way later on, but at the time, um, you made the best decision for yourself with what you knew at the time. Yeah. So I I live by that motto in my life. I do the best I can with what I know at the time. And uh, so, so many of us need that because honestly, guilt is hindsight too. You know, it's okay to look back and say, oh, you know, I, I could have done it. Well, back then you, you, you couldn't have, yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. so. Exactly. Now my, and it was a full my eldest contract. daughter relatively mm -hmm. recently had a miscarriage. I want to talk mm -hmm. about miscarriages. Uh, is, right. How do they occur. What's the spiritual lesson and what's death like for a miscarried baby? especially one that's like six weeks very young just age. well that was Aaron Aaron was like very very oh new. um so like so, those experiences um like both souls are 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 gaining from you know um it's not just a one-way street you know um you're talking about right yeah yeah, yeah. It's like you are the, the teacher and the student at the same time, you know. Um, they give lessons and they learn. Um, like Erin had said with me, she wanted to feel that just being in the, the womb right. and just feel that love and nurturing. Because um, when she thanked me for being her mom, I'm like, geez, like, you know, it was barely six weeks of a pregnancy, you know. So, but that was her you know that's um yeah i'm just getting they know better than we do yeah. <laughs> because oh, they yeah. see the big picture yeah. right yeah of course they do so yeah. what is death like for a miscarriage it's almost like it seems like it would be just like a revolving door you know? yeah <laughs> so is there anything different about a miscarried death compared to a stillbirth or two-month-old living child's but actually I'd, I'd asked Eric about this earlier and he said whether you're five weeks old five months old five years old or 50 years old it is still a death of oh, saying you know nothing, so nothing yeah happens. yeah okay. makes sense what are mm -hmm. the reasons life lessons for a very young baby or child to die so young didn't we answer that already or do you want to add anything yeah else? yeah okay do do Aaron Benja or um um uh, Seth, want to add anything to that? They're just, they are full of so much love. Um, they, they really want to stress to other mothers that it is not a punishment. Um, yeah. It, it, it like some of the harshest lessons can lead us to self-love. That's oh, yeah. what we're saying. Yeah, that's good. And that's that's a, a big thing here to, you know, that's the biggest part of the journey here is self-love, you know. Um, so even though it doesn't feel like it at the time, um, it, 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 it will it will like, teach you it will be part a, a big part of your learning a big part of your uh putting you back together again yeah it's like you get cracked all to pieces and then as life moves forward those pieces are just glued yeah. together in um in a different way you know in yeah a way. yeah so yeah that's a beautiful way to put it this is Benja's mom. Uh, for me, it mm -hmm. feels like there are more and more children uh, are being stillborn or die very young, or there's more awareness and people are being more open about it. First of all, is that is that true? Mm 
he's he's saying the awareness part is true yeah. um and uh like uh one of my best friends in ireland um they had let her go three weeks overdue mm -hmm. and the cord went around the baby's neck and uh so it was, it was a stillborn um and she was absolutely devastated and uh so i spent a lot of time with her but the when I first saw her after it happened, um, she took me into the bedroom and she had like these eight by 10 pictures of this little sleeping baby, you know? Mm -hmm. And I said to her like, but I thought he was stillborn. And she goes, he is, but they do that so that the mothers can accept mm -hmm. more. Right. Um, that, uh, cause they were alive. They were yeah. part of us. Yeah. you know um and Seth is saying that to you like mom I was a part of you you know um that's right wow that'd be very powerful to have a photo like that um all right uh yeah and does this have anything to do this increase with the rising of the consciousness and learning about the fact that death is not the end does that have something to do with the rise Eric's just like the way Eric's putting it is the veil is uh, opening, you know, so that we are at, at that consciousness where we're awakening to yes, death does it death is just rebirth. That's all it is. Like when you said about that turnaround that, you know, in and back oh, again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because there is no time like like Eric's explained, there is no time in spirit. So it is like that for everyone. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Last thing, uh, I'd like um, all three of you to give a, a message to your mom. Let's start with Aaron. What message do you have for mom? Uh, she's just saying that my mom has no idea how gifted she is, how loving she is. Uh, she's getting there. She's saying mm -hmm. she's getting there. Um, that I've I've had a rough road in life, but it hasn't made me bitter. It has uh, it has brought me to self love, and uh, she has always been with me. And she's just saying now that she will always be with me. And we do reunite, like we will be. You will be. Seth saying right now, you will be with me again, Molly. You know, um, we will be reunited. You know, so. Okay, and how do you feel about things now, Helena? Are you okay? Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, I, I'm better than okay. Um, as we as we face these things and deal with these things, it just aligns us more on our, our journey, and we just, yeah. like, that consciousness rises, you know? Um, so... What about you, Benja? A message for your mama? It's this this woman is truly a uh, highly evolved soul, high vibrational. Um, wow. Yes, he's oh, she clearly he, has gifts. Oh yeah, yes, yeah. He he's just saying that she has a lot to give to the world. Um, and she does. Um, and, and he's he's saying that he's really proud of her for how she handled it, because um, you would question it and you would. And, and I mean, other people might even question you like you're not dealing with it. You're not grieving properly. Yeah. You know, we, just, we have these preconditioned concepts of what that looks like. Right. Yeah. So he, he's just saying that, you know, she she was. Um, she knew better than most, he said. <laughs> oh, wow. That's something. Yeah. And yeah. maybe one of the reasons is, you know, she was able to start communicating with her child and maybe that made her more aware of her spiritual gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. it was a vibrational match, you know, so. Seth, what do you have? Any message for your mama? Oh, he's saying, mama, I love you. Um. He's telling you not not to worry that everybody everyone is is going is fine. Um, 
he and Eric are, are very much like, you know, and, and he, he's saying that he thinks that you already see the gifts in Arlene. Um, oh, yeah. Most. Yeah. And, and her connection, you know, um, yeah, like Eric's connected to, to all his nieces and nephews, you know, but um, there's there's that vibrational yeah. match again, you know, that connection. Yeah. Oh. That's interesting. It's it's uh, clear that you and I, uh, Helene, have had um, similar rough mm -hmm. roads, learnings, yeah. forgiveness, self love, turn uh, right. seeing pain and turning it into compassion. Yeah, right. and I wouldn't change any of it, Elisa. No. I wouldn't, you know. And the ones that had abused me, um, I was able to forgive, and, and I now thank them for those lessons. Yeah. You know, because it did bring me to to self love. Yeah. Anything else? Any of you want to say at all before we close? <laughs> They're all just standing there, like bye. Oh, bye. <laughs> bye <sweetie>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Eric, go play. And oh, Eric's just going off. He's got one in his arms and one in each hand. Oh, oh that's beautiful. So Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. All mm -hmm. right. So, anyway, remember you can get in touch with Helena Nimick at Helena Nimick01 at gmail.com. All right. Thank you, everyone. I love you. Okay, thank you. Be sure you love you all. And uh, I love all of you, babies. I love you, Helena. Yes. Eric. <laughs> You're I right love you guys. and all the channeling Eric family. Mwah. Mwah. Bye. Bye.